الليلة فاطمة نسومر قائدة جرجرة انزادت عام 1830 في منطقة تيزي وزو كانت مسلالة مشهورة تاع الشرفة اللي عندهم زاوية في تشرة سومر قرأت في المدرسة تعبابها ويقولوا باللي جمالها كان يفوق الخيال عليها حبوا يزوجوها بكري بالصح للا فاطمة كانت ترفض كل خطة بيدقدق على الباب بابها صبر رصبر حتى حتى عليها باش تتزوج من وليد عمها ما طولتش بزاف معاه وهربت عند خاوتها ما عرفوش اش يديروا معاها تقرروا يدوها للزاوية تعبابهم تواصل عبادة الله وتعاون الفقراء والمحتاجين وبالعقل بالعقل ولات مشهورة بالتقوى ديالها وذكائها ودخلت حتى مع جماعة الشيوخة وكلامها ولا مسموع وكي الحق الاستعمال الفرنسي لجبال جرجرة بدأت توجد للمقاومة وبدراهم الزاوية شرت السلاح وبعدت رسائل تنادي فيهم للجهاد لكل قبائل المنطقة وهكذا ولات للا فاطمة سومر حكمة جيش تاع ألف راجل اداتهم في معارك كبار ضد المقاومة الفرنسية غلبت شحال من مرة لما غيشا الغندون وما خلاتوش يدخل المنطقة مدة تلت سنين بالصح في عام 1857 لماغيشا الغندون هجم فجأة على بلاد قبائل على خاطر بيعولو بالتخبية على اللا فاطمة سومر وين بين ليلة ونهار لقات روحها محصورة كانت خايفة على مصير الشعب ديالها خاصة النساء وكي فهمت بلي كانت رايحة تغسل الحرب قررت تسلم روحها وداوها عند لماغيشا الغندون اللي كان حي بيشوف هاد المرة اللي حرباته قال لها وعلاش تحاربي على جل هاد الجبال الناشفة جوبته هي تقول هاد الجبال علمونا الشرف الاستعمال الفرنسي ادى كامل الثروة تاع زاوية السومر وحرقوا كامل الكتابات تاع الدين والعلوم وسجنوا للا فاطمة سومر في زاوية طابلات تحت وصاية البشغ الخاين طهر بن محي الدين جوزت هكا ست سنين مسجونة حتى ماتت بالحزن على بلادها اللي كانت تسقط بكمالها في يد فرنسا كان في عمرها 33 عام اليوم للا فاطمة سومر مدفونة ما بين الشهادة في العالية وبحكاية الزمان نقول الله يرحم الشهادة وموعدنا بكم يكون غدا في قعدة فيها إن شاء الله فايدة وسعادة So, uh, so how, uh, how, how, as you have seen in this uh, small and short uh, historical uh, video about uh, Lella Fatman Sumer, and um, uh, I don't know if you have noticed actually uh, in the broadcast, in the announcement of this live, uh, it, uh, it was said that uh, it was exactly uh, on the 11th of July, a day like yesterday, then that um, uh, uh, Lalla Fatman Sumer and uh, the other uh, and his and her group who resisted to the French uh, colonization uh, was ultimately and eventually beaten. So it was exactly a day uh, like yesterday in uh, uh, the 1857 uh, year. So uh, Roberta, uh, just to before entering in our subject uh, today, um, I would like just uh, you introduce yourself to our um, to our audience and uh, what you have been doing in addition to this game about uh, Lala Fatma Sumer. For sure. So, um, yeah, my name is Roberta and I live in Edmonton, Alberta, um, which is in Canada, um, a lot north um, from where most of you probably are. And I actually um, design board games is is my full time career. Um, and most of the games that I make are either family games for families who want to play games like with their children or their friends, um, or I'm also very interested in um, games um, that are about sort of historical or educational topics, um, not necessarily to use in schools, but because I think we can learn something even just playing things together. And um, yeah, games can be such a great way to really engage with a topic. And so... Um, yeah, that's what I that's what I do. Um, and in my spare time, I like to you know read books and tend my garden and all those good things. Thank you very much. And in fact, it is really a great opportunity to speak uh, to someone like you because the, um, I don't think I, I don't know as far as uh, I'm concerned about uh, uh, people in Algeria working uh, in this field. So it is really a great opportunity to talk to a subject matter expert. 
and in particular someone who has worked on uh, something related to Algeria as important as the, the history of uh, Fatma Lal and Sumer. So this, this take me to, to start the, the, the discussion about uh, the, uh, the Fatma and Sumer uh, game. If you can tell us uh, how, from where it stemmed, so how the idea came in, who was the lead uh, who came up with this idea, just to start with. For sure. So this game was um, designed along with um, Matt Shoemaker, who's actually also the publisher. It's just a little tiny um, game publisher that he runs. And, and he had, um, he's a librarian at a university um, in, this, in the United States, and he was very interested in um, also in historical war games, um, which are a big hobby, but they're kind of an interesting hobby in that they haven't changed for a long time so that there are very few younger people and very, very few women who play these games. Um, and Matt had had studied about the French colonization of Algeria um, when he had done his some of his work for his thesis years ago. And he thought this would be a really good topic to make a game for this war game audience about because it's so centered on these communities resisting being led specifically by a woman and so he started to look around for someone who could work on him on the game with him um and of course he first looked to see if he could find any algerian designers or people who who could um contribute but as you said we're not aware of anyone from algeria doing this and and he you know he wasn't able and so then he said okay well, at least I need to have a woman on this because it's a, a game about a woman doing this and you wanted to have a very feminist perspective. Um, and so I said, like, I, I mean, I'm Canadian. I, I don't know much about this, but I, I am a game designer. I'm a woman and I'm super interested in this and really willing to learn. Um, and so we started working together there and I spent the first three months of the project just reading everything we could historically about this and of course yeah, that's we'll such get, a challenge yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll get thank you thank you very much roberta i'm sorry to interrupt you we'll get into no. those details but um, before we uh, we progress i wanted to inform our audience also that there is a there is a movie about uh, lala fatman sumer that i will uh, display a short trailer of it it's this one so <clears throat> Uh, it, it's short one, but, but uh, it's very interesting to know. 1850, 20 ans se sont écoulés depuis l'invasion française de l'Algérie, et la Kabylie reste insoumise. L'armée coloniale se lance à son assaut, mais la résistance est farouche. À la tête de cette résistance, une femme, Fadma Nsoumer. Un film de Bolkasem Hadjaj sur cette femme exceptionnelle qui a marqué l'histoire sera à l'affiche à partir du 16 octobre 2014 dans les salles de cinéma à Alger, Tizimouzou, Bouira, Béjaïa, Betna, Soukharaïs, Khanchla, Oran, Clemsen, Sidi Blapes, Saïda et Tiaret.
sorry, I, I, I just noticed that that uh, my uh, my mic was uh, was muted. I'm really sorry for that. So very, very quickly, I was saying that we have, as usual, we have put a poll. Uh, we, we would like uh, you to answer it. Uh, it's about if you think there is enough uh, 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 educational gains about the history, culture, and the heritage of Algeria. And uh, you have three choices. So the first one, you think, yes, there are enough, uh, enough uh, gains. Second, no, no, you don't think there are enough games, and you think that uh, the responsibility is on uh, on the government or uh, on uh, on the state. Or the third answer, uh, you still think th there are not enough games, and uh, this time you think it's uh, the responsibility is on the elite or uh, people, subject matter experts on the field to take uh, uh, initiative to create games about uh, the history of uh, of Algeria. So, and then back to you, Roberta, to tell us a little bit in more details how this game was built. For sure. It, we sure would have liked to get our hands on that movie. We looked so hard. Hmm. So it was lots of reading, you know, all historical newspapers and, and all accounts and stuff. But of course, um, all of the written stuff was written by the French. And so trying to, to get the perspective of, of the, you know, the Cabell people as we did this was really challenging. Um, thankfully, Matt had found us um, um, a cultural consultant from Algeria, works in a university there. So when we ran into questions, we had someone who really understood that could answer that because it was really important to us to respect the story we were telling um, as best as possible because of course it's it's not our story but it's still an important one um and so once i kind of understood what was happening my next big challenge was when you create a game you you need to have um a victory condition how do you win when you play this game and realized really quickly that that was going to be a challenge because it was really important to us that you not be able to play the French, the colonizers, because when you take the role of a character in a game, you're really building empathy there. And we didn't want a game that glorified colonialism in any way. And so ended up deciding, okay, historically, you know, Fadma and Sumer was captured in July let's say that the win condition is if you can last out the summer without getting captured, that would be um, a win condition. And so from there, we went on to figure out, okay, how, how to do this, had to develop a map, spent a lot of time looking at satellite images of the Jujura mountains to understand how that would have been. Um, and then the, the way that we ended up with the game is the players play, um, groups of villages in the region and the French are played there's just a deck of cards and every couple turns depending on how many players are in the game um, a card representing the French armies is turned over and the the game just sort of acts on its own um, and the players are then trying to use their resources um, to push back against that and and unlike a lot of war games you don't just have soldiers you don't just have you know, Mujahideen and guns and whatever, you also have women and children and you have olive orchards and things that would be important to whole communities. Um, you have elders um, who contribute, but in a different way. And so we really wanted to give that sense of like this, this was a whole people's way of life and the whole community was ultimately involved in this conflict. Great, but a um, question that maybe I should have asked before this is, why, why is such game about um, an Algerian uh, uh, hero, uh, an Algerian history? Uh, so do you think that it was going to attract enough attention? So I, I was wondering from, from, from the, 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 the perspective of its success within the public, uh, how you thought about this? For sure. So Matt's vision for this game was he didn't expect it to be like the most successful game ever, but what he wanted to do was start some important conversations in the game, to, in the war game community. And it absolutely succeeded at that. Um, we actually presented about this game at the North American war game conference in, um, 
Montreal. We were in Montreal <laughs> um, just before the pandemic started. Um, and there's um, people from the wargaming community and from the US and Canadian military there. And we were like saying, hey, we think it's important to think about these games in a different light. And that started some really good conversations. And then for the general public who are interested in this type of games, um, it has been really well received in that people who play it are like, oh, this is really neat. Like, I really liked how this told the story and they really engaged well with it. Um, but it was never expected to make, like, I, I imagine that, you know, the publisher made enough to cover his expenses and maybe, you know, take his wife out to dinner, but he never got rich <laughs> off it. <laughs> No, for sure, for sure. I, I, I'm sure that is the case because, uh, uh, yeah, it is the case with uh, with uh, this kind of uh, project. And we will talk about uh, a little bit more about uh, the commercial aspects of uh, such initiatives later on. Uh, but, uh, well, I, I need to congratulate you because, as you said, it at least triggered uh, some kind of, uh, of discussions. And it went to uh, forums like uh, uh, universities and so on. And the purpose of this uh, of this discussion is to create similar engagement, hopefully in Algeria. So maybe maybe uh, people in Algeria will be more interested into this. They will think about uh, other games, maybe translating it to uh, to French or Arabic and so on. So that is one of the objectives of, of uh, such uh, uh, such discussion. Coming back to the game, uh, Roberta, and um, uh, uh, is how is it played? How? How, 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 um, what is, what is the winner? So how, how someone win the game and what is the, the ultimate message? Because I guess uh, in each game, there is a message at, or at least the good ones. <laughs> For sure. So the, the game is played, there's a map of the region. And like I mentioned earlier, each player, um, controls if you're playing for example three players at the table each player would control a region um, of three villages and sort of be responsible for making sure that those are protected and that the way that's done is is essentially using cards you start with some you can add more to your to your personal supply of cards as the game continues in your and you're choosing which one of those to use and how to use them in order to um, whether it's to build defenses or to recruit Mujahideen or whether it's to plant new orchards or um, different things that you might do um, are all represented through the cards that you're going to play. And as the French army moves across the board, you can um, play cards, so for example, to ambush them and try to like drive them out um, and sort of looking at historical ways how that resistance would have happened and trying to replicate that um, using um, hand management, card management. Um, and as I said, if you if you manage to um, get through the summer in the in the game mechanics, um, which is um, when the deck of the French um, army runs out, then you would be considered victorious. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's kind of how how the gameplay works. Um, Okay. And sorry, I've I, lost the other half of your question. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I am. Meanwhile, displaying a few images from uh, from uh, Google for uh, our audience to uh, to to see about uh, about the game. So basically, it's uh, it's uh, as you can see, it's a game, a board game, or uh, similar to uh, to for example Monopoly, the one that uh, that uh, most of us uh, know. But uh, um, yeah, so it's very interesting to to have a look about to uh, to this game. We have published in uh, in our website uh, an article ab about this game, so you uh, you can find enough uh, references uh, about uh, about it uh, in uh, in um, in uh, in the web. Uh, Roberta, one last question about this game, and if you would like to elaborate about how successful it is. So, what was the end message that? Uh, uh, this game uh, uh, wants to to tell to to the players. For sure, that's a that's a really great question. I think that what we really wanted to highlight was, I mean, firstly, we wanted a game that that really made people realize that a lot of the way of colonization how 
ha happened all over the world was really awful. Um, and I mean, that's not terribly hard to do because as soon as you start looking at it, you see. But also we really wanted to highlight the fact that this the wars aren't separate from people. Like it's not just some men go off and fight over here and everyone waits till it's over. It really was a thing that impacted all these communities that changed a way of life hugely. And, and I think it was important to tell that story and to tell a story of how the communities, like when they come together, like they have such strength and you can look at this and you've got in your hand, maybe a card that's a child and a card that's um, a, a woman or an older man. And, and, they're useful, even though they're maybe not the ones carrying the rifles. And we really, really wanted to um, look at, at this from so often when these stories are told, there's voices that we don't hear. Like we don't hear what it was like to be, you know, an older, an old woman or a, a young woman for that matter, or, you know, a child, maybe a boy who's 10 years old and not old enough to go off. And we wanted to just remind like players, like, Th this really is there's a lot of voices here and, and maybe stop for a minute and think about all of them great great thank you roberta and um, uh, ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please do not hesitate to ask we try to uh, answer uh, those that uh, we not uh, have not discussed meanwhile uh, at the end of uh, uh, the, the 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 talk uh, one last question on the game roberta about uh, uh, Technically, how long it take it took, um, how many people it took, um, it, about its commercial success or, or I know it's uh, it's a it's a bit early to talk about this because uh, it's few months back that it was um, uh, made public, but just few technical uh, aspects about uh, the outcome of the game. Sure. So I can speak a lot to the creation. Um, I don't have a lot of specifics about how many copies were sold or any of that. Um, but we started working on the project in August, um, and I handed off my work on the prototype to the publisher, um, in about March of the following year. So six or seven months, um, of working on the game, trying different things, playing with people, changing it up, all of those things. Um, and then of course, um, he worked very closely with the artists who all of the art in the game um, are watercolors done by an Algerian artist um, whose name I had. Where is it? It's right here. As Asen Blibek. Um, okay. I think Asen that's right. Blibek. Anyways, he did a wonderful job and a lot of pieces that had to be created for that. Um, and then there's graphic designers and editors to make like that worked on that end of the project. Um, and, and then once that's all together, then the files are sent off to the factory and, and off you go. And this game was funded through a crowdfunding platform, um, was you, done using Kickstarter. So people who are interested in the game um, could back it there. And that's how he, he got the funds to pay for having it printed and delivered to everyone. Uh, I think you, you you should send a small email to uh, to Hassan Blibek, letting him know about this uh, this uh, broadcast. I think he will like to see it. So, and uh, uh, for that purpose, we uh, we send him our regards and we take him for uh, thank him for taking part of this uh, very nice uh, nice project. So, you, so you just mentioned about um, uh, crowdfunding. In general, this is the way how such product uh, projects are funded. And what do you know how much it was? At least initially uh, raised for uh, for uh, for the execution of such project. If you know that, of course. Um, I'd have to go back to Kickstarter and check. Well, um, it's not it's not very important, but uh, yeah, is this, is this the way that in general uh, this this kind of projects are executed? So it's it goes through crowdfunding or. It's really common for especially for smaller publishers to use crowdfunding. Um, one is that it lets them get their project out in front of the people who might be interested in it without having to have a lot of capital um, because the upfront cost of doing a game could be quite high. So usually they've got a completed product that's just basically ready to, to go to the factory to get printed when they do the crowdfunding. 
Um, and the other thing is that actually crowdfunding itself can be a really good um, tool for uh, marketing, um, for getting people who maybe hadn't heard of it um, will stumble across it through conversations about that um, that um, campaign at that time. So yeah, in, in the board game industry, it's very common. Great, great. So, and um, for our people, I'm asking uh, this question so that uh, at the end we will be speaking about a particular projects we are thinking about uh, in Jazair Hope. It's related to uh, to the creation of a game. So we'll let you we'll let you know a little bit uh, more uh, at the end of uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, now, Roberta, my ne next question about um, is about uh, not specific to this game, but in general to the game industry. Uh, uh, how is it going? How is it doing? Particularly in relation uh, to uh, uh, the development of digital games, which I guess are much more attractive than analog games uh, for for obvious reason, reasons. So, how how this industry is uh, is uh, going on? It, it's actually really interesting because the the board game industry sort of tabletop games have actually continued to increase in popularity and increase in market share very steadily for a long time now. And I actually think that that's a pushback against digital games and the fact that a lot of people go to their office, they spend their day in front of a computer, the kids use computers at school, they come home, they play video games, and they want to spend time together. And sitting down around a tabletop game gives them a reason to do something that isn't looking at a screen, that isn't digital. And I think that's probably part of why we're seeing this is actually growing immensely and continues to do that. And we're seeing a lot more diversity in who's making games and in what type of games are being made. Um, and um, it's no longer sort of a, in a large part, just, you know, middle-aged white men playing games. Now it's like, all sorts of people from all sorts of places. And um, so it's actually really exciting to be a part of that and, and just see, um, you know, anytime you can bring people together and they're building that connection that you can be a part of that, that's just really a privilege. Absolutely. And, and um, what is the target audience? Apart from, from individuals or families who are interested into buying uh, such, uh, such games, uh, do you see, for example, uh, uh, museums, schools, uh, and other in uh, institutions like um, asking for such games or uh, buying them uh, to 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 share them among the students or uh, in the schools or in the museums? Do you see such uh, such uh, such things happening? To some degree, there's definitely a growing interest in in games designed for use in classrooms. Um, those usually need to look a little different than a game designed to play at home with your family, for example, um, because teachers have a whole classroom of students and they have limited time available each time. So those games are usually designed specifically for the classroom, but that's growing. Um, and I mean, again, museums, if the game is topical, they're very interested in that. Um, you know, if, if there's a great game about dinosaurs, then a museum that has a dinosaur exhibit might want that, for example, and sometimes just to sell in their gift shop, but sometimes to use as part of the exhibit. Um, I have a friend who designed a game about the the Northwest Passage, um, which is like north of North America, all on the ice there. To get through the water, the early explorers would try to to figure out could they get boats through there and. And he designed this game that ended up being put in the Canadian Museum of Civilization as part of their exhibits because it told that part of history so well. Um, but in in general, I think the the vast majority of of the market I deal with is is more you know families or people hobby gamers at home. Um, but I only see one part of it. Like there is this huge people doing all sorts of things in all sorts of spaces for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are um, now at um, a little bit uh, more than the half of uh, the time, and we will talk about our uh, next topic, which is, as I said, uh, a project uh, that we are thinking of in uh, Jazair Hope to execute. Uh, and before that, I will share with you the, the background, 
which is, um, uh, as you might guess, uh, is uh, our uh, book, uh, Jazeera Hope book, we, uh, the history of Algeria in uh, 54 objects, for which we, uh, we have um, uh, published recently uh, a, two, a two and a half minute video that I will share with you again here. Comment raconter l'histoire de l'Algérie S'inspirant du best-seller du British Museum « The History of the World in 100 Objects » et commémorant le déclenchement de la révolution, l'équipe de Jazz Air Hope a choisi de le faire en 54 objets. Des objets de la préhistoire jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Modestes ou majestueux, simples documents ou œuvres d'art, ces objets portent en eux l'histoire de l'Algérie. De la mâchoire de l'homme de Tirnif à la fresque du Grand Dieu, de la livre sterling de Gibraltar à la note de musique algérienne, voyager à travers les âges et notre territoire pour découvrir notre récit commun. Découvrez comment les livres « L'Anne d'Or »,« Le traité de la musique » et « Noces de Mercure et Philologie » ont été écrits par trois illustres savants algériens de l'université la plus ancienne d'Afrique de Mador, aujourd'hui Mdaourouch dans la wilaya de Soukaras. Plongez dans l'art du cubisme de Picasso à travers sa toile « Les femmes d'Alger » vendues à 179 millions d'euros pour découvrir qu'il a été inspiré par une orpheline algérienne, Baya Mahiedine, Reconnue aujourd'hui par les plus grandes universités comme créatrice de l'art algérien, le Bayaïsme. Percez les mystères de la parure de Tin Hinan, reine symbole du courage et dignité de la femme algérienne à travers le temps. Ou encore déchiffrez le plan de la Smala de l'émir Abdelkader pour comprendre l'organisation et la stratégie de défense d'une ville qui se déplace en permanence. Rêver du nœud d'amour algérien, bijoux traditionnels, création des marins algériens du XVIIIe siècle, porté par une star d'Hollywood dans le film James Bond, Casino Royal. Le canon Baba Merzoug, le Coran de Tahalibia, la guillotine de la prison Barberousse, la statue du Docker, l'affiche du cirque Amar, le pendentif porte-coran de la tribu des Haïténi, la bague Kladag, l'armoirerie d'Alger, etc. Derrière chacun de ces objets se cache une histoire à raconter, pour éterniser notre patrimoine. Emparez-vous du socle de défense de notre histoire, l'histoire de l'Algérie en 54 objets sur Amazon. Et offrez-le à vos enfants. Again, I forgot to open my, my mic. <laughs> so I was saying um, uh, this book, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the only um, uh, way uh, Jazair Hope try to, to fund uh, its activities and its growth. We don't monetize our uh, YouTube uh, talks. We don't monetize our website. So we try to come up with initiatives, produce uh, products and uh, uh, sell them to fund our uh, our uh, our growth as you know we are a non-profit organization and whatever um, proceeds of this book is reinvested into the platform in whatever way and in that perspective uh, uh, when i popped up on uh, on the red burnus game and um, i was i was really delighted to see such uh, such thing of course uh, more delighted that it was done by uh, by uh, non-algerians uh, and I started looking around until I popped up on, on the profile of uh, Roberta. Uh, and I take her again to be among us uh, tonight. And uh, the idea came to uh, maybe do a game 
around uh, 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 our book, uh, The History of Algeria in 54 Objects. As uh, cer certainly uh, uh, you know, the, the book of um, uh, The History of Algeria of 54 Objects uh, was an, uh, a group uh, collaborative work. So uh, the team of Jazair Hope uh, took uh, over themselves to produce uh, such book. It is inspired uh, by uh, a book uh, that was published by the British Museum, The History of the World in 100 Object. And um, here it is, it is available to, to all of us. Uh, so, Roberta, is it a good idea to think about a game around this book telling the history of Algeria through objects? So this is that was one of the reasons that I reached out to you for. You know, I I think that um, there's a lot to be said about about using a game to introduce ideas and to start conversations and. You, you know, you've already curated this set of objects um, that, that sort of cover a lot of the history. And so the step from there to making that into a game, you know, it's certainly a relatively logical one. Um, and the really the big challenge with that is is narrowing down, you know, who's the game for and what what kind of game experience we want people to have, because um, it's it's very the, the possibilities are very vast. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I, I'm trying to push you. I know it's not obvious to answer such questions in um, um, like uh, live like this and on short time of period. So if we if we would like to go ahead and uh, work on uh, such uh, project. What do you think we should uh, think of in terms of uh, resources, time? Uh, what, what will be the steps of such project? Uh, and, I'm, and I'm asking you this question for because maybe at certain point of time I will ask our audience for uh, for support in whatever way. Yeah, for sure. So ultimately, the biggest i mean you like i said you've, you've got this this body of work that you've already done um and so the the biggest thing is is then specifically being like okay we really think the most important demographic for example might be you know kids maybe ages 10 to 16 or something like you're gonna sort of narrow that down and be like you know we we want this or these things from it and then it's a matter of like from a designer's point of view then of, of taking all that and and mushing it together and thinking about it and trying ideas until you come up with something that that is going to tell that story going to use that information but is going to do it in a way that's really fun and really engaging for that target audience um and depending on the project you know that can take it's hard to put a number of hours on it, but there's, you know, some amount of time, obviously. And then again, you have some assets from your book. So you may not need to have a lot of art created. You may decide you want to have um, an artist do all that, um, like do art for a game. All so it's all done in one style. Or you may be able to repurpose. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, you have to have someone who knows to do graphic design and those types of things. Um, but ultimately, it's definitely a far smaller team needed than if you were going to try to do a video game because the skills required are a lot less high tech and, and generally you would need fewer folks. And, um, okay, you, you said it will need some time, but is it uh, less than a year to, to let's say? Yeah, I would think so. Like, and one of the things with a project like this is depending on how people engage with, like, as a designer, I can put together a timeline and be like, okay, it's going to take me three or four weeks to come up with an initial idea and test it. And then I'm going to get it back to you and you're going to give me feedback and I'm going to make changes based on that feedback. And then I'll need, you know, another whatever. And so there's a couple points in the process always where that timeline is impacted by how quickly you know a client would get back to me but in general for something um 
like if we're looking at, especially for a game that's really accessible for youth or for families, you know, it's absolutely reasonable to be ready to go to print within a year. Um, and then of course you've just constrained by timelines of whatever um, printing partner you use. Great. And um, um, one, one, last, uh, one last game about this. Uh, I spoke about, um, uh, uh, just, to, just to give us an idea, for example, uh, 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 is it like working only with, with the designer or you will be, you will be, we will need to, uh, to have more people uh, into creating this project. So this is one, uh, one, uh, one uh, question. And the second question, what kind of forms this game can, can look like? Is it like a board game? or uh, a card game uh, what are the most popular games uh, you see uh, you see around so the 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 first part of your question like for the actual like how to play the game the rules what it, what is in the box kind of stuff like that as a designer i i do all that and then the parts where you know i hand it off or, or graphic design art the logistics of publish like the printing all of that that's not what I would know. So that's where other people generally come in. Um, as far as what type of game, you know, generally try to fit the game I make to tell the story that we're trying to tell the best possible way. So it's very possible we could make a game that's great, that's just cards, or it could be that we're like, hey, like, but if we add in a board and like some movers or people can like, you know, have pawns on the board or something, maybe that makes it better. Um, but one of the things that I'm really accustomed to doing to, is is working with um, constraints. Like when someone comes to me and they're like, I need a game for this, um, but it can only be cards. It has to be played in this length of time because it's a classroom. The reading level has to be this because it's children, like things like that. Um, and so the trick really is just looking at how do we do this in a way that makes our audience excited to play it again after we've showed them? Um, and, and there's a, I, you know, sort of thinking about this project from like a distant, what would I do if I was doing it level? I think that there's potential to do some cool stuff with a card only game, which as an advantage is much more affordable to produce. Um, and so that can be really helpful um, for an organization, but it's really the sky's the limit. Um, you can get as simple or as complicated as you want with something like this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roberta. I think this is uh, extremely helpful and definitely I will continue the discussion with you. I have seen a few questions uh, from a few people who are not clear about what we are talking about. So we are talking about two things. In the first part of the live, we spoke about uh, a game that is already existing, that is already uh, done by uh, uh, in America by a team uh, there, and which was done by um, uh, and Roberta was lead designer of that game, which is the subject of our life today. Uh, the, the game is called the Red Burners. It's about uh, uh, Lala Fatman Sumer uh, uh, history. And the second part we are discussing about now is uh, the opportunity or the idea of uh, creating a game around uh, the book of Jezair Hope that I just uh, uh, showed uh, the video about, this one that is on the screen. I will, uh, I will play it again without uh, sound so that uh, you have an idea. So we were discussing about the opportunity of creating a game uh, which uh, replicates the content of uh, uh, Jezair Hope book, the, the history of the world in uh, 54 objects. And um, uh, I thank uh, Roberta for, uh, for her answer. So I will definitely continue the discussion with her and see about the feasibility of such, uh, of such uh, initiative. Uh, definitely uh, uh, one of the biggest problems will be, uh, will be uh, the funding. Uh, in terms of resources, uh, um, I can take on myself uh, uh, a lot of work. But uh, anyway, we will look at the details uh, uh, later on. Uh, Roberta, we are at the almost at the end of uh, the hour. As I said in the very beginning, we have asked the, that question uh, about what people think uh, about uh, uh, if there is enough 
such games, educational games, about the history, the culture, and the heritage of Algeria in uh, in the local market. So that was the the question, and um, the 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 options were were to say yes, there are enough, or for that matter, no, no there, are, there is not enough, but uh, the responsibility is on uh, on uh, the government or on the people, on the, the elite. So I, I will share with you guys the, the results now, uh, and we will try to comment them. So, you can see on the top uh, right hand the answer. So we had almost 100 uh, votes, 96 exactly. Uh, most of the people, almost half of the people, 48%, think that there are not enough games and the responsibility is on the elite. When I say elite, I'm thinking of uh, people, subject matter experts in the field of, of culture, history, or for that matter, gamers, uh, uh, people who, who, who know the history and who could take on themselves such, uh, such um, initiatives. A uh, quarter of the people, 25%, think that the state has a role to play on it, of course. And I'm surprised that uh, almost a third of the people think that there are enough games. Uh, for those who have replied that there are enough games, the 30% or 27%, I would be delighted to uh, see if they can comment uh, uh, about the games they know uh, about, which uh, uh, they think... For that matter, they are uh, they are enough. So, Roberta, what do you think about those answers? And what, of course, in relation of what you see uh, worldwide or uh, in the countries you have uh, worked on? Um, I think that you know, generally, we're seeing games are being made by people who are interested in whether it's playing the games or in telling those stories. And so these, the, these answers in your poll totally track with that. Um, I, I think that there's, there's only so much that you can fit into like an education of a, 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 a child going through school or whatever. And so every time we have opportunity to like give new perspectives and learn new things um, in, in a more social way that's outside of those institutions, that's really positive. Um, and I think a lot of folks are looking for that. So, yeah, that tracks to me. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, well, guys, with that, I think we have uh, we have covered what we had in mind to cover. Uh, again, I will look at a couple of, there, there are not many questions. There is one small question for me, which says, is it a game or a book? Again, so we spoke about both today. So we spoke about an existing game which is uh, the, the, red, the, the Red Burners. And we spoke also uh, about uh, uh, the opportunity of creating uh, a game about um, our book, uh, The History of Algeria in 54 uh, Objects. And there is an, an interesting comment, Roberta, I will share with you, and uh, we will uh, try to conclude with this. So Mohammed is saying that... Um, uh, he thinks that the government uh, wills museums, theaters, uh, uh, cinemas, and the elite should uh, uh, work on on uh, on the shows, uh, write books, uh, create movies, and so on. Which I, I I definitely agree with. What do you think? I think that's a that's a really great way of 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 putting it and uh there's a there's a lot of truth in that for sure absolutely yeah absolutely so the state the government has to build the infrastructure but it's uh, the role of people to to take uh, such uh, initiatives i think i have covered all what i had in mind uh, roberta if you would like to say uh, uh, last word please for sure. Well, I, I really appreciate you having me. It's been a, um, a lot of fun having this conversation and, um, you know, talking to folks in Algeria um, is really neat. Um, and and so, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing um, what you do in the future and, um, you know, maybe we'll make a game. Absolutely. absolutely. No, no, definitely we will, we will explore this opportunity uh, uh, really deeply. Uh, in, 
on, on my side uh, again, uh, it was really a honor to have you. Uh, this is the first time uh, in Jazeera Hope we do a live on a such topic. Uh, as you have uh, certainly guessed, we talk a lot about Algeria. We try to talk about Algeria in a positive way. And uh, such initiatives like the Red Burners game is uh, uh, one of uh, the, the things we love to display in, uh, in uh, our platform. So I, I make a call to the people who are listening to us to, uh, to broadcast about, to broadcast about this uh, Red Burners game, to let people around them know about it. For those who can buy it, I think uh, uh, it's great uh, uh, to do so. Uh, and uh, for those who have other ideas around uh, similar topics, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. We can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, discuss them. With that, I will uh, thank you again, Roberta. Uh, we will definitely stay in touch. And I would like to thank uh, the people who were following us for their constructive uh, uh, comments, their participation in the in the poll, and I uh, I would like uh, to uh, to see you uh, soon, maybe next week in another topic uh, uh, in Jazeera. Thank you, guys, and see you soon. Bye. Bye, Roberto. <laughs>
باللي جزير ماشي ديالهم ولادها مازالهم عايشين توسج مسكين فاش تعرضهم في الشده ديما متحدين